Alright guys, today I'm opening a package from uh, Skylighter. It's actually in two boxes. I had ordered a kit to make 10 pounds of uh, gold glitter, uh, stars that is, and uh, they always ship the fuel uh, and oxidizer in a separate box. And that's what this particular box is. I'll show you what all's in here. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, 9 micron aluminum, which is a minus 400 mesh, super fine. And this is, uh, and that was uh, one pound. This is two pounds of uh, sulfur. And this is one pound of air float charcoal. And so that was shipped in one box. And the other box have potassium nitrate, one pound. That's two bags of that, three bags of that, four bags, five bags. It has five bags or five pounds of potassium nitrate. Then we have a bag of dextrin. And finally, we have a bag of sodium bicarbonate. And uh, also, with that particular kit, they had a deal where you could get a 5 8 inch um, little star press. So that's what this is. And I'll be using that. Uh, we'll mix some up in a little bit. And uh, we'll actually be putting out some uh, some pump stars. So anyway, let's uh, let's get this organized and um, find the uh, find a recipe for it or the formula. And um, there's several different there's several different uh, ways of making these. Um, one using all the raw chemicals like like we have here. There's another method um, where we use um, black powder base and then there's also a variation here for adding crackling effect and uh, titanium for uh, different kinds of a, a look but uh, this time I'm going to just go with the uh, raw chemicals and uh, I'll show you real quick what if you can see that what uh, what is in there in the percentages so I will uh, tell you that if you can't see it. So it has uh, potassium nitrate is is 53% uh, of it. Sulfur is 18%. Uh, air float charcoal is 11%. The aluminum is 7%. Sodium bicarbonate is 7%. And the uh, dextrin is 4%. And uh, probably just do... A couple of pounds of this to start off with. That's probably all the all the uh, stars I want to pump right for a while. So uh, anyway, let me get all this organized, and uh, I'll get back to you. We'll start uh, mixing these chemicals. All right, so I'm ready to start mixing uh, chemicals up. But let me show you what I did with this. The uh, formulas typically will be displayed as the uh, percentage of that. Um, of that chemical that goes into uh, a batch. So if I'm making a, a pound and I'm using going by ounces, then I've converted it over to how many ounces each one of these percentages are. And I also converted it over for grams because I'll be measuring by grams. I'm not sure if you can see this, how well you can see this, but anyway, so one pound is 453.59 grams. And so we're going to mix these and then dump them into, uh, mix them in a, or measure them out in a separate container, then put them in a, one container and measure it at the end to make sure we get the 553.59 grams. So we'll just do one pound at a time. So uh, the first thing we want for that then, for potassium nitrate, is we want eight, uh, I mean 240.4 grams. So I'll take a bag with my potassium nitrate. 
potassium nitrate. And let's open that. I'll turn my skill on. And I will zero this out with the container on it. And um, keep in mind, I do have gloves on. I do have a mask on. Uh, it's a little cold weather, so I had sprayed everything down with static guard. So you can't be too careful so, uh, with, with these things. All right, so we want uh, 240 grams. And that is set to ounces currently. All right, so we're at zero grams starting off. All right, so that is 241 grams. Yeah, it's not max. That's about right. We'll go just round these up because I, I don't have, I just have whole grams on here. I can't go a, a fraction. So I'll put that over here, back to zero. Next, we'll get our sulfur. And with it, we want 81.65 grams. Easier just to pinch it, I have found. All right, so I'm going to round these up a little. This is I'm going to be 82 grams of sulfur. Set that aside. And our sulfur. Back to zero. And I'm going to hold off on the charcoal because that's the messiest, so I'll wait on that for a second. The aluminum, we want 31.75 well, actually, I'm going to mix in the aluminum later. Uh, the reason being is we're going to send this through a screen, and you don't want to put uh, metals in your screens. Or it'll get um, it'll get uh, clogged up. So I will put all these other chemicals together, and we will uh, get all these incorporated. Then we will fold in basically the aluminum at the end. All right, so we'll skip that and go to the sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. It's 31.75. So let's open it. Closed up and hard to open. The zip, the ziplock part. Okay. All right. So once again, on the sodium bicarbonate, we want 31.75 grams. All right. It's close. Okay, dextrin. We need 18 grams of dextrin.
<clears throat> Deck trim is pretty messy. So fine a powder. Alright, so again that's 18.14. So that's 18 hair over dextrin. Okay, now for the air float. <clears throat> Let me clean the scoop off so I don't contaminate that. Air float, as the name implies, is very, very light. It's, it's very fine and it gets everywhere, so you have to be careful with it. If I can get into this bag. Okay, so this we need 49.9, so basically 50 grams of our air float. Alright, so we want to open it slowly as well. A little just fly out everywhere. This. All right, again, we need 49.9. Hair more. All right, there we are. Seal that back immediately. And you can see how, or if, you, if that'll come out on camera, you can see how fine that is. It's, it's, it's talcum powder fine. And it sticks to everything, including any containers you put that in. So, I'm going to put a lid on this. We're going to, I'll mix it up slightly here in the container, but then I'll uh, get my screen set up uh, so we can screen this out, and then we'll add our aluminum and um, go from there. So, I'll be right back. Let me get this done. All right, so, I've got uh, everything set up here. I've actually got an old cookie sheet that I like to have underneath. A couple of pieces of brown paper, and the screen I'm using is a uh, 40, number 40 screen, and that means there's 40 openings per square in, or in a square in one inch. A long, long ways there's 40. So anyway, it's a fairly fine screen. And remember, uh, we're not going to be putting the aluminum in, which I went ahead and laid out. This is the aluminum we'll be mixing in later. I'm going to shake this up briefly so we get a start on the mixing. And of course you can see the you can see the air float charcoal. All right, so Usually the dextrin is what has to be, well, in the sodium bicarbonate. Most of the time those are the ones that you need to get worked in, worked in there. So we'll do a little bit at a time here. You can 
see this big lump. Yep, sodium bicarbonate. Anyway, we're, the idea is just to get this well incorporated. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Skylighter, um, even though I, I had their name all over everything. Uh, it's just a, a good, good place to, uh, to get all kinds of uh, supplies for fireworking. Okay, so there's always a little, little tartar grit or whatever left. That I'm going to dispose of. And the reason I've got two pieces of paper here is so that I can lift this one up and we've still got one underneath it to go again. So that's incorporated fairly well. And we're going to send it through again. back in the container and make it easier, but why do that? floating around everywhere. A little story about airflow charcoal. <clears throat> when I first got started, or first got interested in building, I'd uh, gone to a PGI, and I went in the chemical building to buy the ingredients to make black powder. <clears throat> and I didn't, at the time, realize there were different grains of charcoal, and so in, instead of buying air float, I did, um, I bought a, I think it was a 30 grain or 60 grain charcoal, so it was not fine enough, and I was testing it, <clears throat> using it for lift, just did not have any power. <clears throat> it took me forever to feel to figure out what I had done. But that's the way you learn usually is by mistakes. All right, so that's <clears throat> I feel like that is incorporated really really well. And I'm just going to put this our aluminum in. And then we will Diaper method of mixing this. And we just mix it back and forth. I really need a bigger piece of paper for this. Anyway, let me keep at this, get this mixed up well, and then uh, we will come back and uh, start making some stars. Alright, so I got my comp well mixed and got it put into this container. And then I got my scale back out and zeroed out a little plastic container. And now we're going to mix it up and uh, we're going to moisten the compound so we can make start making some stars. Now I'm not going to do all this at first.
but let's say we do we'll do a hundred grams of this okay all right so I'm gonna start off with a hundred grams <coughs> and you'll hear conflict conflicting uh, uh, stories about or information about this but my rule of thumb that I go by is I want to add 10% uh, of the weight of my comp uh, in liquid and that liquid being a combination of alcohol and water and so that would mean that we would uh, if it's 100 grams we'd need to add 10 grams of, of liquid and um, but part of that the uh, alcohol I just do a 10% of that 10% so we'll do this to 101 and then water we will do to 110 until we get a total of 110% okay turn it off and I'm going to start mixing this up a little bit first by hand. Move our scales. And then I'm going to put a lid on this to thoroughly mix it. And mix it in here and it's not at a wet it's not a wet consistency it's just a damp consistency okay, if you can see that it's still it's still uh, it's just damp all right so that's mixed pretty well okay so with these pumps all right so this is a five eight five eight five eight of an inch pump and the idea is to uh, do one that's five eighths inches diameter by five eighths inches long and to achieve that they have this little stub sticking out on this or not a uh, uh, knob sticking out the side here and we're going to compress this material down until it just touches the top of this and that's going to give us a one eighth inch I mean a five eighths inch depth and then we will push it out and eject it and I'll be putting that on another screen this is a 20 a 20 screen number 20 and so I usually just try to hold this away about that much and just press it in So I can't press any more in there. And then we'll go over to a little thing here, or a piece of wood. So we will hit on that thing that many times, however much you think, usually nine or ten times or something. And uh, Let me find a razor blade. All right, so I didn't get, you know, we, we didn't get all the way down to the to the bottom here. So what we do is we push that up until we hit the bottom, or until we hit the edge of that. Then we'll trim this off, and then move it to the slot and eject it. Sorry about that, my battery went out in my camera just as I was ejecting that first star. But here's the first star. 
And it is 5 eighths diameter, 5 eighths inch in length. And it's still fairly soft at this point as far as, uh, as, far as it goes. I mean, I could crumble this up probably uh, fairly easily back into loose comp. But we'll set this aside and let it start drying. And once we get our screen full of these, we'll, I'll put them in the dryer and we will dry these until they, they are just almost rock hard. So that is the basics of doing that. So let's do a few more. So once again, I pull this back from the top. So you can see what I'm talking about, the top here and then the knob sticking out the side. So once it hit, touches the top of this bottom cylinder, that's 5 inch depth left there. So you pull it back and then put your, uh, pack some comp in there. Okay, so once again, I'm going to go ahead and <coughs> press this until it touches the top of that bottom cylinder. We'll slice off that amount. We will turn this into that slot, and then we will press this out. And there is our second star. So, as you can see, it's going to take quite a while. Since this was only 100 grams of that, it takes quite a while to, to go through a pound of this. But I'm going to start doing that uh, and go through it all. And then um, I'll get these dried and uh, let you see them once they're dry. But that's the basics of mixing up a compound or um, a comp and uh, making stars out of it. And you can, you know, once you get once you get uh, real familiar with this and understand your chemicals and what what not to put together, um, you can start varying these a little bit. Um, like, you know, I probably add a little more titanium um, for a little bit different sparks for maybe um, my comets that I'm going to make, the two-inch comets. And uh, anyway, we'll be testing these. These I can shoot out of my little star gun um, here at the house. And I could probably shoot my other stuff here, but we're kind of tight with trees. And so I will, uh, once I get my comets made, we will go back and... Um, um, I will make a shell out of some of these for testing as well, and I'll shoot all of those. I'll tape it all, and it will come back, and then I'll go through actually building the, uh, putting a comet together as well, um, as well as mines. And, uh, anyway, and so, yeah, gerbs too, I've got to do that. But anyway, I'm at the point of just coming up with what I want to do for the competition, what, what shells I'm going to make and um, testing all of that stuff out prior to making the, the ones that I'm going to take with me. So um, I will uh, go through the whole process and tape every bit of it, including the competition this time. So anyway, stick around. I'll be back in just a minute uh, in your time, but uh, it'll be the next day for me. All right, see you after a while. Okay, next day, and of course me being me, I forgot to turn my dryer on when I left last night, so the 5 8 inch stars that we pumped yesterday are not dry enough to prime yet, so I did have these others that I had made several weeks ago, also of a gold glitter, and uh, there are various sizes here, because I'm doing some for uh, mines as well, so I thought we'd go ahead and show you how to prime these, and uh, anyway, the reason you prime stars is to make them easier to light. And so what we're going to coat them with first is a slurry made out of one part black powder, two parts water. And we're going to actually prime them with a black powder that has 5% dextrin added as for a primer. And so what we'll do is we'll take these and we'll put them in a container and we will lightly coat these with our slurry. So I'll put some in there. We'll shake it up and see how it looks. Okay, 
so those did good. They uh, are sticking together a little bit. My slurry is a little thick. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and break these up and dump them in our primer here. And I will put the lid on that. We'll try to evenly coat them with the primer itself. Okay, so once we have these primed, you'll see it's actually a coating of the black powder on them. That too will need to dry afterwards. So what we'll do is I'll take all of these and we'll put them on a screen again and let those dry in the box as well, and then they'll be ready to use. So that's basically uh, the process of making stars like I had did in an earlier one, um, an earlier video. I just wanted to show making these glitter stars from start to finish. And uh, so when we start making the shells and um, mines and things with them, that you'll you know, have seen the entire process. So uh, that's it, and uh, I will show later... Um, with my testing and uh, then I'll show when we start making competition shells. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you later.